Okay, welcome back everybody. This is a VMworld 2013. We are here live inside theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante. Uh, we're here for day two of coverage here at uh, VMworld and what it's all about here is about cloud, it's about what's happening at the end user computing. It's all about the news that's hitting. Yesterday was the big news day. Today's kind of the meat, meaty day. A lot of sessions, all the one-on-ones with the executives, and we're going to get into talking about startups. We're going to talk about a lot of different things. I'm John Furrier. My co-host is obviously Dave Vellante, as always, uh, with wikibon.org. Dave, want to add your take? What's your take on day, uh, day two? What do you expect, and well, uh, how was last night's networking? No, so last night, you know, the, the kick off a lot of the parties and so forth. Tonight's the big night, right? Everybody's got something going on, a lot of the VCs have events and, and we're going to be at the uh, AT&T Park. Uh, EMC's got a big customer meeting, it's a pivotal event, et cetera. Rackspace, I think, is going on tonight or tomorrow. Um, but so today in the keynote, we heard Carl Eschenbach, the, the, the president COO of VMware, really getting down, meat and potatoes. You, you know, I, I said this yesterday, John, VMware is really coming from its position of strength in the data center, in the heart. You know, to use a baseball analogy, it can hit the fastball. Right, it's looking for fastball, middle in, that's the data center for them. You know, the big question is, can it, can it hit the, the splitter, the slider, and the curveball, which is the cloud, and to a certain extent, end user computing. So, what we're looking for today is, I expect we're going to see you know, more proof points with you know, vSphere in the sweet spot, and then, hopefully, we're going to start to see some proof points over the next you know, 12 to 18 months in the cloud, uh, and then you know, some real use cases with end user computing. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I'm thinking about here, Dave, is obviously um, we're going to talk to some VCs here. Uh, Jerry Chen from Greylock. Greylock is a tier one um, Silicon Valley VC firm. We're going to get the scoop from him. Now, you know, yesterday we talked about the VCs and some of them being like a deer in the headlights and we were talking to a bunch of entrepreneurs <laughs> last night and this morning we had kind of an entrepreneurial round table, you and I, getting the scoop from the startups. And there are still bets to be made. And that was our question yesterday. Um, and we're going to continue to talk about that. Are there enough bets, Dave, in the startup space? Storage, networking, converged infrastructure. Will there be enough action for startups to do their thing? And the answer is yes. Now, it's very frothy on the, the flash side, and yesterday we compared that to the Winchester disk drive bubble, which is storage in the 80s, and for the folks who weren't around or old enough or even born at that time, um, what happened was the personal computer gave way to a massive tsunami of growth, the PC generation at the time. So everyone was investing in dr disk drives, 10 megabyte disk drives. <laughs> um, and VCs were funding stuff at huge valuations. That bubble popped, and then obviously a few suppliers came out. But again, disk drives have always been important. And we're seeing that same phenomenon in the flash business. However, some of the smart money is looking at other areas, looking at automation appliances, and stuff up the stack, platform as a service. These are things that are emerging, and we're going to cover that with Jerry Chen. We're also going to talk to Carl Etchenbach, who's the president of these running VMware. He appointed Robin Matlock as the new CMO. That's a new hire, that's news yesterday. But we're going to hear from Carl what his plan is. Because when we talk to Pat Gelsinger on Wednesday at nine o'clock, Dave, I want to really get into what's going on operationally at, at VMware. The big news, obviously last year, was they spun out Pivotal, which uh, Paul Moritz is running. That's the big story. What is going on with VMware? How are they going to organize? How are they going to go to market? How are they going to fill in the white spaces with the products? What's their product management strategy? What is the positioning with the ecosystem? These are all open questions. It's an open book right now, and those are the things that we're going to get into. Um, so I want to get your take on, on VMware's operations, what needs to happen, and I want you to just riff a little bit on your, the study on wikibon.org on the hypervisor, and what does that mean for VMware? Well, so a couple things. I mean, VMware's going after a, what they think is a $50 billion TAM comprising you know, the management really above the hypervisor. I mean, the hypervisor, as we all know, is getting commoditized. Uh, and, and as you know, Microsoft gives it away for free and you know, open source from Zen, et cetera, CloudStack and others. Uh, but so they're really, they're, they're, they're imperative is to go, to get customers to go on that journey, you know, beyond the just straight consolidation. And you know, by all accounts, you talk to customers, VMware clearly has a lead in terms of its ability to deliver that. You know, the real question, John, is can it, 
accessed and tapped the other parts of that total available market, in particular, that hybrid cloud. It's putting forth the vision of hybrid cloud. Um, we were talking to some folks last night, cloud service providers, at a dinner we were at, and, and, and they were telling us virtually every deal they do is some type of hybrid, and the data governance discussions are substantial. Now you won't necessarily have that kind of in-depth data discussion, uh, data governance discussion with Amazon. So VMware's bet is that they can have that discussion, they and their partners, with the CIOs, and that the CIO will own the data governance within the organization, and they'll be able to essentially block Amazon from the enterprise. So that's their big bet. Uh, and then of course there's the you know, post-PC era piece. But, but John, you've been, you've been watching the evolution of VMware. We were here in 2010 saying, look, VMware is the new IT economy. We, we made that call, you actually made that statement on theCUBE. What do you see, since we've been here since 2010, how do you see it evolving? Well Dave, uh, good question. I think, you know, for me, from my personal standpoint, obviously I'm in Silicon Valley, so I'm close to VMware, I'm close to Google, close to Facebook, a lot of these companies that are, that are innovating, that are, that are the new generation. VMware has really kind of stepped into virtualization, kind of by accident and on purpose with, with the original VMware, Diane Green, the original team, and we know a lot of those original VMware folks, guys at Cloudera, Eli Collins, Jerry Chen, a bunch of folks, is a, there's a VMware mafia out there now from the original VMware, and it really morphed from just a tech product to a full-blown, you know, the next Oracle, and that's kind of way I, how I see the, the trajectory of VMware. But really what's happened has been interesting. Over the past four years, the cloud, mobile, and social vision that we started SiliconANGLE around has exploded. But what's happened is, Paul Moritz laid out in 2010 the stack, and it was, when you and I talked about it, it was like the modern day OSI stack, infrastructure, uh, middleware, and then apps. And it was the software mainframe, some called it, essentially the cloud mainframe. But the issue is that the market shifted. The market shifted around virtualization, network virtualization, and IT wanted hybrid cloud. That was a critical piece, and what happened was that stalled VMware's march to the enterprise at the end user computing. VMware has had misfire after misfire at the end user computing layer, and they've had some good stuff. They bought Dynamic Ops, which we like. We know Leslie uh, Mueller's been on theCUBE. They have some serious tech chops at the top of the stack. The problem is they tried to roll out applications for the enterprise prematurely. That was a misfire. Now they've retooled, they've moved down into the data fabric, and you're seeing storage with Pat Gelsinger uh, and Chuck Hollis moving to VMware. This is a signal that e, uh, EMC's influence on VMware is going to make them a cloud player. And if you look at the tea leaves of VMware, they're all about small, medium-sized enterprises all the way up to the full-blown, full-scale, hyperscale enterprises. And that's going to be their, their magic. IT data centers and cloud migration. So multiple architectures in the cloud via hybrid and the availability of some public cloud here and there, and the public cloud will be non-security intensive applications, you know, general applications that they can run like a website on or other kind of non-mission critical. So that's the key, Dave, that I see, is that you see VMware going directly back to the data center. It's basically the IT playbook, but it's all about cloud. But they want the SMB and above. And, it's, and expanding beyond vSphere to really tap that $50 billion TAM, and we're going to be covering that all day. Uh, Jim McBride is coming up. He's the chief cloud architect at Express Scripts. Really interesting company. You know, actually massive uh, in terms of uh, uh, that industry. We'll be talking about what they're doing, their business model, how they're building the cloud. Uh, Chuck Hollis is coming on. Uh, Chuck is now with, uh, with VMware, so we'll get his excellent perspectives. And uh, we'll be going all day. So, looking forward to it, John. This is day two, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is live at VMworld. This is we're live in San Francisco, Moscone South Lobby. Follow us on siliconangle.com, siliconangle.tv. And we're trying out a new experiment with crowdchat.net slash VMworld. It's an open 12-hour chat room. Go in, put your comments down. It's a new application we built. It's like live Quora meets live Twitter. It's basically a thought leadership chat room on Twitter and everything goes to Twitter. Go to crowdchat.net slash VMworld and be part of the conversation. If you're not here and you're watching remotely, get on your web browser, go to that URL. Go to wikibon.org, they got a great survey out on Hypervisor uh, that came out that's brand new research and follow us on SiliconANGLE. This is theCUBE, here all day. We'll be right back with our next first guest of the day right after this short break. <laughs>